In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a Shopify private app, and I'm also gonna show you how to connect to that app with Python through the API to update a product. Hi everyone and welcome, my name's John, so let's get into it. So what I have here is I have my awesome Shopify store uh, that we can just see here. Um, obviously this is not a real store, it's just for testing purposes. And what you need to do to create your private app is you need to come over to the apps and then see down here it says working with the developer, manage private apps, and this is a little link that you can click on. So we're gonna go ahead and click on that and it's gonna ask us to create a private app. Now if you can't get to this part, you need to speak to the whoever actually owns the store, as in from um, who set it up for you. So if you don't have that store ownership, you can't create a private app. However, you can go to whoever you got your store through and say, I need you to create a private app for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create and we're gonna get a load of options. So when this loads up, it's gonna ask us for a few specific bits of information. Now, depending on what we actually want to do with this private app, we're gonna choose different bits, but from this purpose, I'm gonna select all of them. So the first thing we need is a name. So what that means is whenever the app does something or records it, it's going to say that this app's name did it. So call this something meaningful. I'm just gonna call it my app, which you should probably not do. The developer email, I would go definitely go ahead and put your actual email in here if you're gonna be running this app properly because anything that it does wrong, Shopify is going to email this email address to say something isn't working or you need to update this part because it's now outdated. But just go ahead and put any your actual email in here, but I'm not going to. So now we come down to the active permissions for this app. So we need to click on this and this is where you actually wanna choose which uh, parts of the API your app can get to. So in this example, I'm going to be updating a product. So I'm gonna look down and I'm gonna look for the products part, which I think is down here. So we've got products, view or manage products, variants and collections, or view or manage products and collection listings. Uh, I can't remember which one exactly it is. So I'm gonna put both of those on. If you don't allow access, for example, to the products or to the fulfillment or the orders, and then you try and access that, the you won't have access to it, so the API will block you. So I'm gonna hit save, and I let it, uh, I'm gonna say yes to create the app, and I'm gonna let it load up. And then from here, what we're gonna do is we can take that API data information that's given us, and we can take that to our code, and we can start changing the products or updating them in this case. So now it says that the API credentials are saved and we get down here an API key and a password and an example URL. Now obviously you can see these on my screen. I'm gonna leave them in because I'm gonna be deleting this app as soon as I have finished with this tutorial. Now you can do it in a couple of different ways but the easiest way to work with Python and creating requests to an API is to use the request package. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy the whole example URL here and I'm going to go back to my code and I'm just gonna say my URL is equal to this. Now this is a really long URL. Um, it, it contains the API key and, uh, and the secret there. And we can see that it also says the store name. Now this part here is the one that we're interested in because we can see we're accessing the admin, the API, the API version, and then the endpoint there. So I'm actually gonna remove that bit the orders.json because I'm not gonna be accessing the orders. I just want this URL. So I'm just gonna leave that like that. We need to import requests because we need to be able to send requests to this API URL. If you don't have requests installed, you can pip install it uh, with pip install requests. The next thing that we wanna do is we need to actually know which endpoint we want to be hitting to be changing our product. So if we go over to the, um, I'm gonna go to my products actually here quick. If we go to the, a, the uh, API documents for Shopify, we can see here that we have a get request uh, for the count of products and the list of products. So I'm gonna be interested in the list of products because we need the product ID, the Shopify product ID to be able to update it. And then we can see we want to do a put request, including the product ID to update a product. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this bit out uh, with the, actually we only need the products.json, there we go. And come to my code and I'm gonna call, I'm just gonna write this in real quick, endpoint is this. So now we have our API key and our URL and the actual endpoint of the API that we want to hit, the products part. So now we need to start writing some code. So I'm gonna write a short function that's going to go to this 
uh, Shopify store and get all the product information. Now, if you've seen any of my web scraping videos, you've seen that I've been able to access some product information via the external, like the API, but this is the actual admin API. So we get all of the product information and we can actually update it. So that's what we want to do. So I'm going to say DEF for define my new function. I'm just say get products like this. And then I'm going to say, I'm actually going to put my endpoint in here. Uh, there we go. We'll remove that part there. So this is just going to let us uh, put that in instead of typing it in, in case you wanted to change it further down the line. And now we want to do R is equal to requests.get because we want to create a get request as we saw uh, in this part here. It says get, and that's the request we want to make. And we want to say our URL plus the endpoint because we're just going to concatenate these two strings together and that's just going to get it for us and then out of this function i'm going to return r.json because it's going to return a json response object from the url from the api so now what we can do is we can just print out uh, our get products function okay so we got a load of json data back here uh, and you can see that we have a opening dictionary or adjacent data which python will interpret as a dictionary and then a list with all the products in the api now there's only one product on this store this amazing t-shirt that i uh, have created <laughs> so we only have one product but you can see it returns the product key and then a list so what we're interested in is this id so how will we go about getting that part of information let's just remove that terminal actually so let's say we want to get products so we want to store this in a variable so i'm going to say products is equal to get products and then now we can print out products and we can actually manipulate this now the first thing the first key in this uh, json data this dictionary was actually called products as we saw and then we saw that it was a list so i'm going to say i want the first item on the list and then i want the id key so you can actually just reference this throughout any way that you would normally uh, by accessing the JSON. So there we should get to the ID right in the bottom corner there. You can see we have the ID of the product. Right, so that's good. So what we can do now is we can actually change the, we can actually do a put request, sorry, to update this product information. And what we're going to do is we're going to change it from active to draft now that's like uh shopify changed that reasonably recently it used to be um published or something like that but now it's draft which means it's not available to buy and active which means it is available to buy so you could quite conceivably want to publish a load of products at a certain time or on a certain schedule and not have to do it manually now i believe you can do this other ways through the shopify ui or through apps but this through this example i'm just going to show you how you can update that part of the information so I'm going to kill this terminal and we're going to go ahead and write ourselves a new function because we need to do something slightly different because we need to do a put request. So I'm going to say define, and I'm going to call this change status. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the docs real quick and we can see that when we do a put down here, we have to reference the admin api then the, the uh, 2021 which was the version then products then slash and product id dot json okay so we need to construct our url to look like that so when we go to that endpoint it knows what to do so we're going to give our change status function two arguments one is going to be product id because we need to know which product we want to update and the next one is going to be status because we want to know what status we're going to update it to either uh, active or draft the next thing that we want to do is we need to define our payload. Now, this is the information that we're going to be sending to the API to say, this is what you need to change. So I'm going to call this payload is equal to, and it's going to be a dictionary. Now, within this dictionary, we need to give certain information. And if we come back to the API docs and we click on the put request, we can actually see that that tells us what the uh, payload should look like. Now this isn't actually strictly true anymore because it doesn't, it's not called published anymore. So we're just gonna change that. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this out and come back to our code. And our payload is going to look something like this once I tidy it up a little bit. Okay. Now, because we're already giving it the product ID, we don't need that line anymore. We just want this part here. And it's not published anymore, it's status. And the status we're going to change it to is the status that we're going to give the function that we've written here. 
So what this is basically saying is this is the little bit of information that we're going to send to the API with our put request. And we're saying that this is the product that you want to change because we're going to be hitting the actual complete endpoint for that specific product. And then this is the status you want to change it to. So now we can actually write our request. So again, we're going to do R is equal to requests, but we're not going to be doing a get request because we don't want to get the information. We're going to be doing a put request. So request.put. Now it's going to get a little bit more convoluted when we construct this URL just because of the way that we're doing it. Um, but once you get the idea of how it works, you'll be able to neaten all this up. So I'm basically going to say the URL, then plus, and we need to actually do the product, but uh, not products.json. So we can't use this here. So I'm going to copy this out and we're just going to change it ever so slightly. And we're going to do products forward slash. So now we can do this plus. And now we need the product ID, which is what we've got here, except you can't concatenate a integer and a string because we're going to be giving this an integer. So we're going to do string like that. And that will basically turn this string, uh, turn this integer, sorry, into a string so we can concatenate it together nicely. And then the final thing that we need to add in is just the uh, .json extension there like that. Now we've got our basically our URL, our URL constructed. Now you could put this all on a different line if you wanted to. So we could just say send URL is equal to all of this. So we can keep it a bit neater. So then we can say put that in there like that. And now we want to add in the payload that we want to send. So because this is in JSON format, the way we're going to send it is we're going to say that JSON is equal to our payload. Uh, you need to do it this way, otherwise, if you try and just send it as data, it won't be in the right format and it won't work properly. And then we're going to print out the r.json response so we can see if we get an error or if it's worked. And I'm just going to return out of this function. So to summarize what we've got so far is that we've got our URL with all of our API uh, and uh, uh, user data in. We're gonna, we've got our function to get the products, which goes to the products.json endpoint. We saw that earlier. And then we've got our change status, which is taking a product ID and the status. And we've constructed our URL down here based on what the API showed us. Now this is just this way of doing it. And then we do our put request with our payload changing the status here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this products is equal to get products in. I'm just gonna collapse this function because we don't need that now. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, um, we're gonna take this because this is our product, uh, product ID here. And we're going to go ahead and change this print statement here. And we're going to do, in fact, let's copy that out. And now we're going to do our change oh, type status like that. And this is our product ID that we just got earlier. And the status we're going to change it to, if I go to the store where I opened up my actual products, we can see that this is product is active. So I'm going to change it to draft. And because we've got our print in here, we should see some output in the terminal when we run this. So let's run it and see what I did wrong. Get any errors or do we get the data back? No, see, we've got a JSON response, which is what we would expect. So if I come back to my store and refresh the products page, this product has hopefully changed to draft. There we go. And if I come back to the actual storefront, this product is going to disappear in a minute. Once it updates itself, there we go, it's gone. Now we could change it back. So let's kill this terminal. And let's say, instead of the status of draft, which we've got down here, I'm gonna say active. And I'm gonna run this. There's the response from the API. And if we come back to the products page and refresh, there it says active and back to the storefront, refresh this a couple of times so it catches up and the product's back. So that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Hopefully you've got a good idea now of how you can actually interact with the Shopify API, a private app uh, with Python. It's quite simple. Once you get the idea and you understand how the API works a bit better, you can start to construct more useful tools for Shopify. For example, in the past, I've done things like maybe you have a external third-party fulfillment house for your store and you send them your orders 
a couple of times a week and they send you a sheet back with all of the shipping information including the tracking but in Shopify you have to go through manually one by one and input the tracking details and fulfill well you can do that through the through the API nice and easily and you can use Python which is a good uh, programming language to do so and you can start to construct things that might be useful for your store I've been John guys thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next one goodbye